I am going to be showing you guys how to make something really simple and a bit silly. I'm going to show you how to make a little hand puppet. Really simple, really easy to do. Uh, <laughs> and it's basically working on a little bit of a mask. So as you can see, we're just working today with uh, our, my favourite material at the moment, which is just cardboard. And all you're going to need to be able to make this guy is uh, some cardboard, any old cardboard's okay. I'm using a bit of a thicker cardboard this week, like a box. Uh, and then all you'll need apart from that is tape and scissors and maybe a pen to help you. So really, really simple materials. With no further ado, I'm going to show you how we're going to start off with making one of these guys. So um, if you get your cardboard ready, um, the first thing we're going to do is think about drawing a kind of uh, face shape like this. And um, we're going to work uh, by creating different shapes today and exploring kind of how the cardboard guides us. So I have found this guy really in cardboard and I'm going to do my best to show you how to make someone just like this. But I'd actually really recommend if you guys uh, fancy it, sort of exploring the shapes that the cardboard gives you and seeing if your character could maybe be a slightly different one to mine. Because um, the brilliant thing about card, as you well know, is that it can really reveal characters within it. So um, yeah, I will show you the way that I put this together like a puzzle. Uh, and then hopefully you guys can explore the kind of uh, expression your puppet will end up with and the kind of character that you make as well. So. We're going to start off with taking uh, a nice kind of small bit of card. This is about the size of my hand, maybe a bit less. Um, but you might want to make yours smaller. So the reason I've gone for that is that, as you can see, if I hold that up and tuck my ring finger in like this, you can kind of see it's a nice big oversized shape. So I want my head to be roughly the same size as my, as my hand. I'm going to draw roughly a kind of head shape on my card. making it a little bit kind of you know fatter than it than it would be I guess just for ease so I've ended up with kind of a head shape there and I'm going to cut that out you end up with your head shape chance to just even it out if you need to thing I'm going to do is um, I'm going to think about uh, the 3D quality of my puppet head. I want to make sure that it's not totally flat. So if I turn it like this, you can see that I've got a couple of layers of card here. And that's so that I can bring the, the more 3D features forward. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing on this. I'm going to use this as a template and I'm going to draw around it. And then I'm going to probably only cut out up until where I want the nose to be and the reason I'm going to do that and that's probably to about here is because I really want to bring the nose for feature forward that's that's the whole intention so what I'm going to do is I've drawn around my head and I'm going to cut out half of the head like this so that if I lay it over the top of the other, you can see that I've got a little bit more 3D coming forward there. Yeah. Um, we're going to do that a few times in this session. We're going to use the cardboard to bring those features forward and create more of a 3D effect on our puppet. So now we've got these two bits together, I'm going to uh, start off with creating the lips here because they actually sit between these two bits of card. That's how they're kind of kept in place. And the lips are really, really simple. So what you want to do is take a little bit of card. And if you're working with this kind of box card, the great thing about the corrugated stuff is that it tends to have this kind of uh, tendency to bend in one direction. You'll find that it's got these lines in it. And we're going to work with the bend of the cardboard to create our lips. So um, I'm going to cut out a little square. I can see on my, on my puppet's face that I want my lips to be about sort of this width but as I said before if you're experimenting with characterization or you've got an idea of someone that you want to create then by no means is that a hard and fast rule. So I'm cutting out uh, a square like this and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by rounding the bottom here. So 
so that you can get an idea of where you want your your lips to sit on the face and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to work into that bend this corrugated bend to sort of explore creating a little pair of lips so you might need to just kind of work the cardboard a little bit but you can see that even if i just do that a little bit you start to end up with something here you know so this is a stage to really start to play with the material and explore what it can offer you cardboard is super easy to kind of like you know it's malleable and it's quite easy to work with and it's got quite defined parameters as well because you know that the corrugated side is going to be more uh, agreeable to bend than maybe the other way so um i've just bent that a little bit and you can see that just through really playing like this i've bent two little little sides in there and now you've got a little pair of lips so i'm now going to put my lips in between those two bits we've just made and you can see you've got the beginnings of your puppet's face like this okay this is going to shape the most of the workshop just working with the material discovering what the cardboard can do and really it's about creating shapes that are pleasing to creating your character so uh, you might discover that something comes out of nothing here when you're playing around and if it does then i'd suggest to really go with it and see what see what you can create so um, now we have made our lips, the next thing we're going to do is uh, I'm going to raise uh, another little bit across the middle of the puppet. I'm going to cut another strip here and that's going to be the, the point where our nose goes on. So I'm going to cut a strip of card which will help raise the nose forward and then I'm going to show you how to make the nose. Here we are, we know that uh, our nose wants to kind of sit uh, around here. On our puppet's face. That looks like about the right space. So I'm going to cut another strip of card that's going to go around here across the puppet and that's as I've said to be able to raise that nose shape forward. So once again I'm going to work with this this corrugated, uh, the bend in the corrugated card here and I'm going to just roughly look at the width I need. Here we go. And uh, I know that I want that to be the same shape as the bit behind. So what I'm going to do is flip this over and trace around it. So that now when I cut these edges off, hopefully, yeah, that's going to fit perfectly. So now I've got a little bridge for the nose to sit on. The next stage is making the nose. And uh, again, we're going to work with this corrugated shape. So as you can see, when you're working with corrugated cardboard, it really does you a favour when you're thinking about creating noses because as you bend it, you end up with what's essentially a nose shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold my cardboard over like this. And if you'd like to, you could use a pencil and just draw the shape you want, but I'm fairly happy with uh, with working with cardboard so I'm going to have a look and see what my nose could look like so um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bend the sides out like this and I'm going to see if I can have a look at going on with the nose there so as you can see I've bent this and I've kind of got the beginning of a nose shape but in honesty the bridge here isn't doing it for me so I might just see if the other side works a little bit better and this is a, a nice thing to know that if it's not quite working for you try and flip it over and reverse it sometimes it helps with the uh, cardboard being a bit more agreeable so yeah that, that, that's working a little bit better so I'm gonna kind of create this triangle shape a bit like a witch's hat but then I'm going to make sure that the bend here is enough to sit so that it's evenly, evenly triangular on top here. That's so that when I put it over the puppet, you can start to see how it's going to create a nose. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut upwards like this. So that now when I go back to that bend again you can really start to see 
how it's starting to shape into the tip of a nose here. So the next thing that we're going to do is we want to kind of create this, this nostril that we have. Uh, and the way that we do that is just by having a look at, uh, at the nose shape that we've created like this. And then from the side here, you can either draw a little shape or you can just have a little play and see what happens if you cut into the side here like this like a pizza slice when you then open it up you're going to see that you've got these these two bits that fold out like this and this is where you can really start to play around with shaping a kind of nose and creating a kind of sense of a, a tip of a nose so let's see what happens when i do that so I open this back out again you can really start to see now where the nose is and i'm going to start to really bend this section here and see if i can bring his nose out a little bit there you go have a little cardboard nose but obviously this is way way too big for the face so now what we're going to do is we're going to trim this down so i'm going to take off as much as i can on the sides Remember that you do need to have something on either side here to fold out because that's what we're going to use to stick down onto the face. And then I want to make this uh, a little bit shorter because it's a bit too tall. So I'm working with the shape that I've cut out. As I said, yours might be a little bit smaller, but you can see that if I hold that now, it's still a little bit too big actually. So let's take a little bit more off. Have a look how that's looking. So. If I now hold that here, you can see that we've got the beginnings of our face. And I've made sure that it's not too big, my nose, I've cut it off. But we do need to make sure there's some excess here because what we're gonna do now is we are gonna make sure that our nose can have a bit more of a bend in the top here. And the way that we're gonna do that is with some kind of origami. So what I wanna do is think about where I want my nose to have its bend in. And for me, it's probably about halfway down. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut halfway down my nose. And then if I turn it over, what I'm aiming to do is fold those two sides kind of across into a triangle like this. One that side and one that side. So you end up with it folded at the back looks like a bit like a collar of a shirt and the reason that we're doing that is that when we turn that to the front you're going to bring those two edges together and as you can see then if I turn it to the side you've got the bridge of your nose okay so to reiterate you could really play around with this you know you're, maybe your character's got a really big nose or maybe you want a little button nose it, it's quite easy to play around with that you know but the basic principle of how to create that shape is here with that technique and it would be great to see what you guys create with regard to your characters um what you can see is that i've made sure to leave those flaps either side and that's so that we've got something to actually stick our puppet down with but without getting lost we need to make sure that our nose is stuck together so i'm now going to use a little bit of tape and i'm going to stick that bridge of the nose down now i'm going to make sure that my bridge is how i like it and then i'm going to stick over the edge of the nose like so so you end up looking a bit like that and what i do there is i'd make sure that the back it hasn't got these triangles poking out because you want it to sit flat on the face so I'm just going to make sure that I can fold that back and I'm going to trim off any excess cardboard there. Now I can kind of play around a little bit with, uh, with that shape here. Have a look and see how this is going to end up on the face. nice so now i've got my my nose i've got my lips you can really see how it's starting to come to life however let's not get too excited the first thing we want to do is make sure that our nose is going to sit nice and comfortably into that bit there into this bit so what i want to do is i want to kind of create a little bit more of a dent for this to sit into 
uh, and that's so that we're bringing the cheekbones forward. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, that little strip we cut out earlier to bring the nose forward, I'm going to look at how big my nose is, how wide it is, like this. And I'm going to just make a little mark where the nose is going to sit. It's about here. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a kind of oval shape out of it, like this, because I want the nose to sit into that well. And this is so that we're bringing the cheekbones forward to create a bit more 3D. So let's see if that's going to work there for me. Yeah. So now, hopefully, we can start to see how I take these two corners out here. We made our nostrils earlier and now I've just cut this section off. Now, my nose should just fit within and underneath that little well there. So I'll just hold that up to the camera so you guys can see. So what I've done is I have cut that little, that little oval shape that we described and then I've made sure I've cut that little edge out of my nose there. What that means is that then you can kind of slip, a bit like a puzzle, the nose underneath that section so that it is sitting over the top, but you've still got some cheap things there, okay? But as I said at the beginning, this is about playing with materials. So you might find that you find a better way to bring that forward. Maybe you're lucky enough to have a glue gun or something at home. If you do, then obviously that will simplify everything because you can just like glue gun pieces on top of one another. But for today, we're just going to work with tape. So it's quite fun to find how your features can slot into different features and work out how that's going to change the expression and the way that the face sits. So at this stage, you should get, you've got your basic kind of face shape together here like this. The next thing that we're going to have a look at is working on creating these eyes, these top bits here, okay? Because that's going to inform how we create our cheeks below and where our eyebrows will sit and things like that. So the next thing I'm going to do is just create this top section of an eyelid so that we can position that on the face and then work out where the rest will sit. For an eyelid, we want to have a kind of triangular shape. This is the bit I cut out earlier. So just to give you an example of how the eyelid could work, you kind of want to think about how we're going to create that shape and where it's going to sit. So if I hold this one there to kind of give you an idea, you can start to see how when you add your eye, it really, really changes the expression on your puppet. And this is where it's fun to experiment with, um, with, with the shapes that you're working with. So if I hold that up, there we go. It gets very Picasso when you're playing around with these bits and pieces and they're not stuck down, it's quite fun. Um, if I hold that up like this, you start to see how if you can hold eyes in position, you might want to have an angry puppet, you might want to have a more emotional puppet, and these are the bits that are really going to dictate the kind of expression on your puppet's face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a piece of card and I'm going to cut out a kind of triangular shape. I'm going to play around with the kind of shape I want to create. I've kind of cut out a slightly triangular shape to play around with. And I'm just going to have a look at how that works on the face and see if I'm happy with it. Might need to be a little bit smaller. And this is another reason why it's really great not to stick anything down and get too excited with the tape because you can really play around with what it is you're, what is you're going to end up with. Yeah. So that's quite a nice shape. I might triangulate that a little bit more. And really think about working with the shapes, working with what you're creating, because rather than me giving you a full pattern for this, I want to really encourage you guys to explore what you can discover with the cardboard this week. This is a real opportunity to just discover a character and see what comes out of there.
I've created two of these sort of triangular shapes. And this is going to be the top of the eye, and this is working like the eyelid here. And then I'm just using these two shapes on my face to experiment with where the eye should sit. You can start to see where those are. And now that you've got those in place, this is the bit where we want to start to stick things down because as you can see, I'm at the stage where now everything's kind of moving around. So once you've got the basics, once you've got your lips and once you've got your nose and once you've got the top of your eyelids, then we're going to go work, work backwards and we're going to stick each section of our puppet down. So going back to our, our face now, I'm going to start by sticking down each layer one by one. And we'll start with those lips that we made because it goes underneath that section of card. So here we go. So I'm just going to move the nose to one side there. And I'm going to start by making sure that my lips are in the right place on here. And I'm going to take them down to keep them in place. And then the same goes for this little section here. I'll just trim that a little bit. And I'm going to stick along the side here because it's just a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. Like obviously my guy is just cardboard, but um, normally I would paint my puppet actually, but I didn't get around to doing that this week. He's a kind of a blank canvas, but you could really create some amazing uh, kind of characters. I'm quite inspired by Picasso with stuff like this because you can really play around with shape and form. I think it'd be really interesting to explore painting a puppet like this in quite bright and vibrant colors. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to stick down these sections of our puppet. So remember that we've got these two here, one should kind of slot into the other. And uh, now's your chance to kind of make sure they really do. So if you need to trim any more bits off, like here, this is your chance to do that, to make it all sort of fit together like a puzzle. So hopefully that's going to slot in beautifully now. Yeah, which means can have a little play around with where this nose is going to fit on the face and again this is your chance to kind of play around with it once you've found the position then hold it down use your tape get it stuck together like this and then hopefully that bit there can slot underneath the beginnings of the cheekbones as you can see like this Sort of. I'm always working on the sides here just because that's the bit that you want to make sure is attached. One more on the other side. Again, the other thing you could do with, uh, with, a, with a puppet like this and with a face like this is to work with paper mache. Um, I've avoided doing that because it takes a lot of time to dry, but it's an amazing way to kind of create shape and bring out the 3D element of this. And it's really easy to make at home. You just need newspaper and glue. And if you've not got any glue, you can use flour and water. So I've now stuck those bits together and you can really start to see the face and you can see how I brought it forward a little bit 3D. I could have worked a little bit more into the mouth there, but we're keeping it quite simple today. So now I'm ready to explore where I want to put these eyes. And you can see that if I start to hold these up. You've got a really nice little face and he's looking quite ponderous, this guy. I quite like giving him his expression like this. You can see how if I kind of really move it around, it really changes the way the puppet looks. So have a little play around with what you think is right for you and once you've found the right position then you're going to stick it down and this is where you can also bend the cardboard so that it's a little bit more 3d see so when it sits it's sitting out of the face like this so i'm going to do that on both sides and i'm just going to face him to me for a second while i stick the eyes down And I'm really working into the cardboard as I go. I'm making sure that it's staying where I want to and I'm persuading it to bend in the position I want it to and then taping that down. When 
ending up with something a bit like this. And as you can see, we're kind of really getting somewhere now. So the next stage is to think about these cheekbones here. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to work into this bit that we've we've raised this part up because if you see on our faces, obviously we've got these cheekbones here and it just provides a little bit more structure to your puppet. Um, also puppets tend to give you an idea of where they're looking with their nose. So this guy, you can really tell where he's looking, even though he's not got these eyes in. There's a lot of direction there. And already you can see that where we've created 3D areas, it provides shadow depending on the light, which again can help to be quite dramatic, which is quite fun. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to create these cheekbones here. So what I really want to do is I want to look at the shape I'm going to need to bring forward to this section. And I kind of want to make sure it fits into that section. It's quite hard to see with this cardboard now. It's kind of camouflage. But what I want to do is create a little eye section here. So I'm going to um, use this cardboard and I'm going to work into it and I'm going to cut a little oval shape a bit like this and you can see that then when I hold this up I'm creating that kind of eye space and I'm going to do the same that I've done above here I'm going to work the cardboard and I'm going to push it out so that it's 3D so that then when I you can sort of see how we're starting to get this 3D shape in the eye here. And this also gives you a kind of socket where we can fit in a little eye behind. So when I'm happy with that shape, a little tip is rather than having to do it again, you can just fold the cardboard in half and you can use your pencil to draw exactly the same shape. So that then you can just cut that out and it's exactly the same on both sides. You should end up with something like this, and then you can just cut down that handy line that the cardboard gives you because of the corrugation. So now you've got your cheekbones. Let's see how we can fit them onto the puppet. So I can see that I want them to fit around here. And I really want to make sure that they're nice and 3D. So again, I'm, I'm bending them up. In fact, have I got these the wrong way around? Yes, sir. there we go. So I'm really looking at how this can fit in. And it might be that this is too big. So this is where you can trim it. and sort of fit into the structure of the mask that you're making, the face that you're making. And once you're happy with it, again, you're going to use your tape and you're going to stick it down. Try and remember when you're doing this to try and bring it as 3D as possible because it really helps. Like I'm going to actually fold this section up and tape underneath because I want to try and keep it as cardboard as possible. But if you're going to paint it, you really don't need to worry about that. It, it will all get painted and it will look lovely. So I'm really working the cardboard to make sure it's standing up and then I'm going to tape into those edges there like this. So you can see the difference between this side where I've just added the cheekbone and this side where I haven't. Just gives you that 3D quality. I'm going to come and do the same on this side. My face is a little bit wonky from uh, where I put this below. So I'm just trimming these bits to make sure that they fit. You might be really symmetrical, in which case I'm extremely impressed. When you're happy with where it sits, take that side down as well. And I'm just going around now and I'm just making sure that things are sitting properly, that it's taped down neatly, that I'm happy with where things are sitting. 
And I'm working into the card to bring those 3D elements out that I like. Emphasizing them. Reworking the card. Feeling kind of happy with where things are at. This is a really lovely thing about this technique is that you can just really work with the material. It's not going to matter if it's uh, slightly, slightly wonky, you can really move it. It's only tape. The brilliant thing about working with card in general, I guess, is that you can just tape it up if it goes wrong. I'm going to add a little bit of top tape at the top here just to, because it's kind of going that way for mine. I can see that the head's starting to really appear. Obviously, once you've got to this stage, you've got a real sense of your character uh, and uh, it really informed yesterday mine looking I kind of he reminds me a little bit of I don't know maybe like a kind of knight or something he looks like he's kind of a little bit not bothered about the world this guy I don't know maybe they're brothers who knows but uh the next thing we're going to do now is have a look at adding in this this central piece of the eye here um and all we're going to do for that is just use a really tiny bit of card and our pen but i wouldn't put the dot on yet we'll put the card in and then we'll have a look at where the eye will sit so um you want to make sure that you're not using a huge amount of card because what we're going to do is just sit a little bit inside like this and bend it bend the card so it's slightly oval and i'm going to play around with how it sits inside his eye so you can you can see I've just cut a bit there and just wedged it in basically and it doesn't move too much but actually what's quite nice is that one yesterday did and then you end up with like a googly eye effect which is quite funny um maybe your character's a little bit goofy in which case a googly eye is going to work really really well and again I'm just bending that bit of cardboard over and now I'm going to see how it fits in with my with my puppet that you kind of start to find that things move a little bit that's fine you want to play around with really where the eyes sit because obviously if they don't sit in the same position once over here you're going to look like you've got a really goofy character <laughs> which could be quite fun actually but i'm going to try and make mine even there we go so i've added in these two eyes I'm playing around with where they sit on his face, like this. And once I'm happy with it, I'm gonna leave those for now. I have got a pen, but we'll add in all of the detail on pen at the end, which means we're now at the stage where we can think about adding on some hair, some beards, some ears. So I'm gonna start with the eyebrows here because I think eyebrows are really fun. And um, on puppets, eyebrows also give quite a lot of expression. I mean, same with us. If you if you put your eyebrows up, then you're going to look really surprised. So the same with when you're looking at your face. Um, this is a bit where you can really play around with what kind of expression your puppet's going to have because the eyebrows will provide a lot of emotion. So I'm going to take a little bit more card. And um, I want to make the eyebrows a little bit more 3D. So what I'm going to do is, again, I'm, I'm taking my card and I'm just working with that corrugated stuff like this, bending it over. And let's bend it a little bit like this. And I'm gonna kind of have a look at my puppet's face and look at the size that I need my eyebrow to be. And then I'm gonna estimate a kind of shape that will work. But as I've said all along with this, um, you can just create the shape that you think works on the character that you're making, because no doubt the cardboard will be working slightly differently for you. So uh, you can see that I've bent the cardboard out a little bit, and I think I want my puppet's eyebrow to be kind of this kind of shape. So I'm gonna cut into it like this, and just have a look at how that works. That seems quite good actually um yeah that seems okay i'll do the same on the other side and i'll use this as a guideline for uh, as like a template so that they're the same so i end up with two roughly the same shapes that one's ended up a bit bigger it's okay oh you're really look at that i ended up with a wonderful flick 
That's actually quite fun. <laughs> um, oops, bend that. Yeah, really working the cardboard so that it bends in the way that I want it to. And you can see there that I put on some eyebrows. Maybe I want them to go the other way. But here's the fun bit. Here's where you can really play around with the motion of your puppet, how it's going to look. Maybe if it's surprised or not. It's kind of nice. And once I've created the kind of aesthetic I'm after, then I can start to cut in a little bit of detail. So I'm just going to do some zigzags, I think, on this guy just to give it a little bit of texture. You can also uh, create and draw at the end if you're really confident with drawing. This is a really great opportunity to create something that's quite caricatured. So there's a bit of that and I'll do the same on the other side. And then here's the great thing, because we've cut it so that there's, it's kind of in half and I folded it, we can use this back section here to push the eyebrow forward and create a more of a 3D effect. But I don't want it to be huge, so I'm just going to trim the back off just so that there's a kind of lip so that I can use the tape along here and it's going to sit forward off the face. There we go. So when I'm happy with where my eyebrows are at, just trim the same off the side on this side. Then I'm going to stick that down. Oh, I'm making a very earnest, very earnest guy. You can see how the eyebrows really provide that sense of emotion. But don't forget to play around with it. You know, you might want to have an angry puppet or a really kind of sad or a really goofy puppet. Same with the eyes, but yeah, you can see how the uh, eyebrows really give a lot of emotion. So um, next up, I think I'm going to add on a little beard. And then finally, we'll do the ears. So the beard is, um, I might give him a slightly bigger beard today. Why not? Give him a fairly um, modest goatee yesterday, but I think we let's play around. And you remember that when we stuck the lips down, we didn't actually stick the bottom area here. So that's given this flap so that we can sit some, some beard underneath here. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop that there. And you can start to see that if I wanted to, I could give him a massive beard, but let's remember that we've got the body. So we don't want it to be too big or we're not going to be able to see the hand. So probably take it to around here. And uh, I'll just work into the shape with some zigzags. Oh, look how that sits. Yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty good. So I'm pretty happy with that beard there. And you can trim it so it sits exactly the width of the lips. That's quite nice because that way you're going to also be making the lips a little bit more 3D, which is fun. Which means the final thing we need to add on here are our ears and of course the other thing that's really helpful now with ears is that again going back to our corrugated card we can bend this to create a kind of cupped ear shape and we can cut two pieces of card that are roughly the same shape And then you can cut them together. So I'm overlapping my two pieces of card and I'm cutting a rough oval shape, rough ear shape. Again, you can make this as realistic or as cartoony as you want. I'm making him fairly cartoony. And then you know that your ears are gonna sit around the same sort of place as your, as your eyes here. And again, ears can really create a sense of character too. If you make them super big, he's kind of goofy, or you can make them kind of smaller. You can always play around with how it changes your, your puppet's aesthetic. 
when you're happy with that. I think I'm going to make mine a little bit smaller. Then we stick that on the back. One on that side and try and make sure they're even unless you're going through the kind of uneven thing. One on that side and uh, I'm going to stick the beard at the back so that we don't have to put any more tape. That should keep it in place nicely. Here we go. So I've stuck everything down. I've had a little play around with the expression. And as you can see, I've got to the stage where I created the face pretty well. Um, the last thing we need to make sure we've got on here is, is something that can mean that we can hold it at the back. So at the moment it's just, it's just flat. Uh, so to do that, we're going to take another piece of card and you want to um, fold your card in half and you want to have enough so that you can like cling onto it with, with, a, with a good pinch like this. So obviously your hand's going to be different size to mine, but I'm going to make sure that there's enough card for me to pinch and really get a good grip on my puppet. And then all you're going to do is you're going to bend either side of that like this so you end up with a kind of handle and then that handle is going to sit on the back of the puppet so you might need to trim it so that it doesn't poke out either side so let's do that and then what we're going to do is obviously we're going to stick that on the back and a little tip is when you are putting your handle on any puppet really you want to try and make sure that it's in line with the eyes and the reason is is that then you know that where you are moving is the puppet's eye line and when you're performing with the puppet that's quite important because if i put the handle at the top there then you notice that he's not quite looking at the camera there I've put it too far at the top so he's going to have a tendency to look down. Equally if I put it at the bottom you might find that a puppet is always looking out over the top and really what you want is to get a good eye line. So we're going to try and keep that handle there in the same line with the eyes here. Just make sure uh, that that's in the right position before I stick it down. Uh, and, and a way to do that is also to just draw a line so that you know where the eyes are. And then when you know where that is, we're going to stick that down with tape. And you also want to try and make sure that your control is in the middle, uh, as in the middle as possible, because if it's not right in the middle, then you might find that, again, your puppet's looking off into strange and wonderful places. And you're not quite sure where. So I'm just taping down either side over the edges there. And we need to make sure that this handle is on pretty securely because it's the bit that's going to have all of the all of the tension so try and stick down all of these side bits just leaving the handle in the middle nice and securely so i'm really going around this with quite a lot of tape as you can see and it's just to make sure that i know that that's not going to come off so once you've got that what's this doing yeah you should be able to hold your puppet. So this is where if I bring my hand back into play and all I'm doing is putting my fourth finger away there and holding him here, you've now, you're now able to uh, move this guy around and hold him like a neck. Not quite finished yet though. The last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna work with our pen and just draw some detail into the face. Now, if you're working with paint and you wanna paint your puppet, and I'd love to see if you do, then obviously um, you don't need to work in with a pen. But um, if you're not, then this is a really nice way to just bring out some detail. So I'm gonna add in some eyes, a little bit of ear and a little bit of beard there. So um, I'm gonna start off with uh, just putting some detail into his beard here. Just bring that out. Maybe the same in the give him some ears. And the last thing is 
to get the people. So I'm going to look at him to get those right. What you end up with is a little guy. So the final thing is bring that ring finger in and suddenly you've got a very simple, very quick and easy hand puppet. But that's the final puppet for this week. So I hope you've really, really enjoyed it. And uh, until we do some more workshops on puppetry, then I uh, hope you will see you then. But until then, thank you all very, very much for coming and hopefully we'll see you soon.